Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're going to investigate the best armors to use practically in Escape from Tarkov now that the dust has settled on the new system as well as the changes made in recent patches. We'll be focusing primarily on access and efficiency so that you can use the same armors without spending too much time messing about. So to start with, there are 52 armors in total in Tarkov now and I whittle this list down firstly by disregarding anything that doesn't cover thorax with the soft armor layer. There is enough choice to not have to settle for anything that only covers the plate area. If you're not sure what this means exactly, then make sure to check the tooltip for armor areas to see if thorax is specifically stated. If it's only F plate or FR plate, then there's a gap around the plate itself at the front of your PMC where you can be hit with no armor at all. So of these that state thorax, if we exclude the non-modular armors, there are only 27 left that take replaceable plates and protect the front and back of the thorax properly, which makes our decisions a little bit easier. Next we have to think about weight, cost and availability of both the carrier itself and the plates, starting with the budget section. In this section here, there are two armors that do deserve a special mention because they don't have replaceable plates, but they can be used to simply throw something on without messing about in your stash too much. I'm not really that kind of player, but I know that some people are. So the first is the DRD Packer, the big bright red one, which is extremely cheap on the fleet at about 25 to 30k, and it's class 3 all over, much like the base protection on the high level armors. The benefit here is that by being only 4 kilos, you can take a wider variety of equipment before being overweight, but the protection that it gives really is only the bare minimum. The other super easy armor is the 6B515 Ulay, which is class 4 all over. This ends up being a unique feature of this rig because even even the best armors in the game with modular plates only get class 3 outside of the plate area. Although it doesn't have anything protecting the sides, you do get groin protection as well at class 4 along with class 2 on the neck hitbox. The downside here is the 12.2 kg starting weight and the small rig capacity with only 10 slots, but as a quick pick up and go armor at 64k with Ragman 2 after completing Ballet Lover, it can be an option especially at lower trader levels. Since the latest patch, all the funny stuff around damage mitigation has been fixed, so you won't get one tap through this with APM, but you also won't with a plate either, so these two things have come back into line a lot more than when we last looked at this piece. Another alternative is the 6B13 armor from Ragman 2, as it comes with class 4 plates by default, and it only costs 64k so long as you've finished the quest audit. This lets you use any rig that you like, but you do have class 2 soft armor everywhere that isn't the plate on this one, so technically it isn't as protective as the Yule. There's a small benefit to having class 2 soft armor behind the class 4 plate in that specific zone, but it is relatively small in reality for most situations. At 10.6 kilos though, you can't really avoid the high weight with this armor either. If you want to spend a little bit more time min-maxing your kit, the next best armors in the budget category have to be the Juk Press and the Karasa. The press armor is a cheap barter with Skier 1 and the Karasa is purchasable from Ragman 2, but both of these take a little bit longer to set up because they come with class 3 plates by default that you probably don't want to run. At this point, there's honestly only one class 4 plate that I ever look at or use once I have the flea market, and that is the Monoclete 3. There doesn't seem to be anything noticeably different between the plates of the same class outside of weight, and given these are the lightest, I recommend using them anytime you want to have class 4 in an armor. You can get them from Peacekeeper 3 directly with the Press Pass Barter or inside the Trooper, the Banshee and the MMAC armors of which the Banshee can be good value if you're bargain hunting and sometimes even on the flea market. With that, the Karasa is easier to do because it takes western plates both front and back, meaning that you can use monocletes on both sides, but it doesn't have any side plate slots so it relies on its class 2 at the sides. The Juk Press takes the western armors at the back only, relying on the diamond shaped plates at the front for the armor, the same as the 6B13 vest. This is the 6B33 class 4 plate which is 16,500 rubles on Prapple 3 but they are also cheap on the flea and this carrier also lets you add side plates too. These begin at class 5 so once you have him there are cheap 10k per plate to protect the sides of the stomach, however you might decide that these aren't worth the cost or weight in your loadout depending on what you're trying to do. All of these replaceable armors can relatively easily be fitted with class 5 front plates as you move up through the traders and the quest progression, with the western carriers typically taking the GAC 3S15 M plates that we'll talk about a bit more shortly, and the eastern ones using the granite 4 front instead, but at this stage I think it's worth upping to class 3 soft armor. This brings us to the mid-range tier and the easiest run and gun armor now is the Bigari rig in my opinion. It comes with the class 5 Karund front and back plates by default but this one was recently upgraded to class 3 soft armor which is the only one with this kind of plate style that has it. 
Being a cash purchase at 145k as well from Ragman 4, you can simply buy it and put it on once you have the trader levels, and with the option for side plates too that it interestingly doesn't come with, it can get a bit of extra protection here as well. These are the Karund VM side plates from Prapor 4, but at 1.1kg each, on top of the Bagari's 10.8kg weight with the standard plates fitted, it does get a bit cumbersome. This is the main reason why I still see the Bagari as a mid-tier rig, because of the lack of choice that comes with this plate type, it's very much take it or leave it with little customization, and obviously doesn't have any neck armour either. However, there are a bunch of other choices that are much lighter and can give you much the same protection overall. My absolute favourite for everyday use is the Thor Concealable Armour. After Database 1, you can barter this with Ragman 2 for two slim diaries, costing around 70k. It's worth remembering that this comes with two class 4 plates of its own, the Spartan Omegas, which in my opinion are some of the worst due to being 4.4 kilograms each. This makes the default Thor weigh 10.5 kilos, but without them it's only 1.7 kilograms, instead making it the lightest class 3 thorax protecting carrier with replaceable plates. You can sell these two back to Ragman for 10k each, which makes the Thor 50,000 rubles to start with, and then being a western armour, you can put whatever you fancy in here. I've been using the previously mentioned GAC 3S 15M plates, which you can craft in the hideout either using the TAC TAC or the AACP Seacraft after So It Good 4 or Living High Part 2, and this is because you put one plate in and you get two out. These are also the lightest plates across class 5, and my philosophy on class 5 plates is exactly the same as tier 4, at least until I see something more meaningful distinguishing them from each other, I'm just going to pick the one that's the lightest. Interestingly, the GAC plates are even lighter than the monocletes at just shy of 1 kilo, which is incredible, and with two of these installed, the Thor Concealable only weighs 3.6 kilograms, which is less than the Doctor Disrespect armour. A typical configuration, if you don't have endless plates stacked up, is a GAC in the front and a monocleat in the back, which is only marginally heavier, and at these low weights, you could realistically justify taking the two class 5 sappy side plates as even the heaviest combo of GAC, monocleat and side plates is only 6 kilos. The downside to the Thor, obviously, is that you don't get any special protection here, so nothing around the groin area, but most noticeably the neck too, which means you are a little vulnerable to catching random scav buckshots or 762 HP to the neck. As a PvP armour though, it's very good, as most players will be using ammo that defeats class 3 soft anyway. With the armour upgrades that we saw recently in the patch, there's a new alternative to the Thor but in rig format, which is the ANA Tactical M2 rig. Now that this has class 3 soft armour as well, it's got exactly the same protection as the Thor, front, back and sides, and with side plate slots too. As the dog tag barter requires 10 level 20 tags at Ragman 4, it's a bit of a strange one that most people probably won't do with a minimum price of 75k, but you can pick up the empty carrier itself fairly cheaply on the flea market and load it up in the same way as we talked about with the Thor. When buying armour from the flea market, if it has Aramid as its soft armour, don't be afraid to repair this. The effective durability of the Aramid soft armour is super super high and it repairs really well for a tiny price, practically getting back to near full effectiveness unless it's been used many many times. At 2.25 kilograms, the M2 is only half a kilo heavier than the Thor Concealable, so if you're looking for an easy rig to use, for example taking Red Rebel Extracts on Reserve, Shoreline and Lighthouse, it's a new option that you can use instead of the Thor. Outside of these two, the AVS was upgraded as well, but this is more expensive and heavier without side plate slots, so generally I'd stick to the first two that we talked about. On to our final category, which is the more kitted end of the spectrum, and this typically includes class 3 armors that also have neck protection and usually some other hitboxes as well. We have some choices here, but maybe not as many as you might think, due to restrictions and also some changes to ballistics that have come through with the latest patch. The first armour that I want to look at here is the Defender, using the Sledgehammer Barter of Ragman 4, which makes it a pretty cheap 130k at normal times. This is the lightest class 3 armour, with neck protection, that has a direct trader purchase at 5.7 kilos, and comes with granite BR4 plates, which are the same shape as the Western Sappy plates. This usually means that you can use other plates like the GAC, and indeed with the Defender you can. Two GAC plates in the front and back of the Defender puts it to 7.6 kilograms, which is pretty good, although it doesn't have side plate slots and relies only on its class 3 armour if you get flanked. And do remember that the neck protection on this one only applies at the front and not at the back. While quite a bit heavier than some of the others we've seen, the Osprey protection at 6.9 kilos base is also on the lower end of these larger armour systems, and provides us with front and back neck armour at class 3 as well as the arms too. 
Since the last patch though, I personally feel that arm armor is nowhere near as important now as it used to be, simply because bullets just won't go through arms anymore at all. It has been shown all over social media how even M61 doesn't pen through blacked out arms now, which really diminishes the value of having armor over those sections in the first place if they're impenetrable anyway. That said, the Osprey is still a great armor and only costs three SAS drives at Peacekeeper 4. However, it comes with the even heavier Tulcom Guardian Class 5 plates at 3.5 kilos each, which along with the sappy side plates makes it weigh nearly 16 kilograms altogether, which is pretty insane. With only GAC plates, this comes to 8.8 kilograms together, which is a little bit more manageable, 9.2 if you swap out one of the back plates for a monocleat instead, and around 11 with the side plates inserted as well. There are some heavier armors like the Gen 4s that you can get, but at this point, I just don't think there's enough benefit for the extra weight. Technically speaking, two other great armors are the Gazelle and the Juk Digital, which can be kitted out with a Granite 4 front plate with a GAC in the back for 7 kilos and 9 with both sappy side plates as well, but these aren't purchasable in any format and they're expensive to get hold of because you have to get them from the fleet. On that basis, they're probably not worth using unless you find them or can buy them from max level fence at the reset for cheap. Now, you might just be happy running a few armors with GAC plates after doing the craft a couple of times, but it does leave the question of what to do with all the random Tulcom Guardians and BR4s that we get from doing the barters for the Defender and the Osprey. You could realistically just vendor these and use GACs only, but if you're not quite flush enough with plates to do that, one thing that I like to do is to use them in the Thor Concealables instead. If you're not hard pressed for weight specifically on your loadout, the Thor, even with the 3.5kg Tulcom in the front and a monocleat in the back, only ends up at 6.5 kilos, which is certainly very usable. Usefully, the Thor takes granite BR4s as well, so it can be a good home for spare class 5 plates that otherwise would simply go to waste due to how heavy they are. One final consideration before we wrap up is, can we even get class 6 armor these days? As of patch 14.1.1, class 6 front and back plates are highly restricted, primarily being found in raid only either by themselves or part of a carrier like the Juk Digital. The easiest access is the Slick Barter on Ragman 4, which costs quite a bit given we're not going to use the Slick as a carrier, although it does sell quite back to Ragman even empty which takes the sting out of the barter a little bit. To do this, you need 3 Troopers, 6 Kaduras, and 6 Aramids, with the textile portion costing 200 to 250k on its own, depending on the market. As for the Troopers, there is a barter after Blood of War Part 3 for 3 Axle Parrots that is new this wipe, costing about 96k. This is a little more than the flea normally, but inside the armor you get 2 monocleat plates. You can either recoup 23k by selling these back to Ragman directly, at which point the troopers are about 73k each, or you can use them as backplates in other armors like I do, in which they can be considered worth 20,000 each given that that's normally what you pay on the flea for them. In that scenario, the troopers can be considered to only be costing you 56,000 instead because you're using the monocletes elsewhere, and which means that the whole barter can cost about 350,000 rubles. Selling the Slick Carrier back to Ragman for 157,000 leaves you with two Kibber Arms Steel Class 6 plates for an implied 193k, or just under 100,000 each, which is still pretty expensive if you ask me, and at 5.1 kilograms, you have to really think carefully not to carry too much weight. The only other guaranteed ways to get Class 6 plates are via the Tasmanian Tiger SK barter after completing Longline, a level 45 quest, providing the ESAPI 4 ceramic plates for about 45k each, which are probably the best value Class 6 plates. The other way is using the Zabralo or the NFM Thor Barters after completing Boos, which are level 50 quests instead. These two give you access to the Granite BR5 and the Nesco 4400 plates, which are otherwise unobtainable, and at 3.3 and 3.6 kilograms respectively, the BR5s from the Zabralo are technically the best that you can reliably get, if you can make it to level 50, which only a fraction of the player base will. Overall, for me personally, I tend to swap between the Thor Concealable, the Osprey and the Defender, and for really budget runs, I just grab a Yule because it's so easy to slap on. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.